What's up folks, welcome back to another video. This is an entire series on how to build an entire Mern stack application from scratch. If you've done it before, that is fine. There are a lot of things that we discuss here that will definitely be beneficial for you building an entire Mern stack from scratch. If this is your first time on this channel, this is where we help you become a full stack developer. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and we'll be right with you after the pause. The last video what we talk about is we log in into our mongodb atlas account we show you how this work in terms of clusters we show you how we can see our data and how we can add a user and even allow everybody to connect to our database so if you haven't watched that one before definitely check that one out in this video what we're going to focus on we're going to have the same functionality the only thing is going to be different is instead of using mongo lab we're going to work with our local environment assuming that you have mongodb installed without any further ado let's get our hands dirty before we start in order for you to check and see if you have mongodb installed you can just type the command which mongo if you see this then you do have that one installed however if you do not have that one installed in order for you to install it within your my computer you can kind of follow this link i will add this one into the description of this video then you can just kind of go ahead and you can type brew update and then brew install mongodb and make sure that you kind of follow the command you need to create that folder and do the following in order to get everything ready to go now if you are a windows user then you definitely can go ahead into that link and go ahead and download the window version for that in order to get mongodb installed into your computer all right by now you should at least have mongodb installed the next thing that we're gonna do is instead of using this link i'm gonna go here and delete that one also delete this one and only use the mongodb one so if, if i do that and now go here and run my server with nodemon and there we go my mongoos is connected if i go here and refresh this page i won't see anything because i don't have any data into my database but if i go back into this line or that was saving everything into my database and i uncomment that save them then it's gonna go ahead and save this very super dummy data into my database and if i go back and uncomment it because i don't want to keep saving every single time the server will refresh uncomment that and if i go back to that route and ladies and gentlemen we do have some data now but how can we see those data into a tool similar to how we see this data using mongo last like this into go into collection well if you guys go into google and, and go to that url again those url will be included into the description you can download this tool called studio 33 here's the benefit of it the tools that i'm currently using right now now is the robo 3t and it's very simple task embedded shell there's super lightweight into it however if you want to go ahead and do more complicated stuff with this such as autocomplete queries with intellishell shell then you can download studio 3t again i'm going to go here and search for that into my computer and there you go i do have this all i need to do is click on create i'm going to give this one a name such as development i'm going to leave everything as default and click save and once i have that development environment then double click on it and there you go ladies and gentlemen we are now inside mongodb and we have different database here with the one we are currently using if we go back into this app we are using something with the name of mern youtube which is this is the name of our database that we are connected to so if i search it somewhere over here and there we go here's our database if i click on it click collection here's our collection if i go here i can see the data that was added which is fantastic so everything is working as expected again whichever one that works for you either you're using mongo lab or using the local one feel free to use whichever one you want to whenever we're about to push this application to heroku we're going to come back to this one and we're going to show you guys how to configure everything end to end but before we end with this video the last thing that i want to do is i want to refactor this a little bit what i'm going to do is i'm going to go here and create a folder called models and this is where i'm going to be putting all of this code that are related to the schema so i'm going to go here and create of create a file called black post.js i'm going to go here and move all that code which is the schema and the model into that file called black post and we need a couple things here first thing that we need we need to of course bring mongoose and after we bring mongoose here i'm going to go here and do module that export and i'm going to export that model because we want to use that model wherever we want to so any places that want to use this model then they can feel free to require that particular file and they'll be available to start using that model second thing i'm going to go here and, and add another folder 
I'm going to call this one routes. And within the routes, that's where we're going to build our APIs. And that's where we're going to start adding some routes, such as get route and so on. So for here, I'm going to start bringing a couple of things here. I'm going to start bringing Express. Once I have Express, I'm going to be using the Express router. Once I have that router, I'm going to go here and do module export and there you go i export that router so all i need to do now wherever i have all this rod i'm gonna all that routes i'm gonna move all of them into into that routes api js so i'm gonna move them here instead of having app now all of that app is going to be replaced with router and there you go ladies and gentlemen everything now is equal to router now there's one last thing we need to do is we need to bring the model if you remember we now have a folder called models and this is where the model is all we need to do is import that files in order for us to start using the model right here so i'm going to go here i'm going to call this one black post go one level up and go inside the model and select that file in particular and then this can start using the model that we all require from this once we have that let's quick wake up we do have two things our model and our routes now our route is the one that's all using the models that's what is bringing the model and start doing things into our database so such as querying our database or saving thing into it. So what we want to do now is we want to bring our routes inside our server. So wherever we have our server.js, this is where we're going to be bringing our routes. So we're going to store this one into a variable called route. So I'm going to go inside the route folder and then select that uh, file, which is api.js route. So I'm going to go here and take that route and I'm going to start configuring that route right after that HTTP logger. So I'm going to I'm going to do app that use and give it the starting point of that route. So which is slash and ladies and gentlemen, everything should be working as expected. And I'm going to go here and delete those dummy data because I already have some dummy data into my database. I don't need that. And ladies and gentlemen, everything should be working as expected. Our server file is much more cleaner and then things are being separated into different files. Now, in order to test and see if this work, we need to run our server. So I'm going to stop it and run it i'm running my server and everything seems to be fine so if i go on that route if you remember inside a route inside that file there was a route called slash api which means i should be able to start hitting this route so if i go back into localhost that port so if i refresh this that should still give me this in particular so it's still giving me this which is fantastic which means our cleanup has successfully been working what else can we do well one thing i'd like to do before i move on any further if i go back into the route api if we notice every single starting point of that route start with api which means this is something like the starting point of every single route what we can do is we can delete that starting point which is common and what we can do in this case back to the server file wherever we have that starting point we can start that particular route with slash api and that should do the job, which means everything inside that API routes, even though they have this, they will have a prefix of slash API. So if we go back here, refresh this, that's still, that should be working. If we go back again, slash name, which we are referring to this one and click enter. And there you go, that is still working as expected. And of course, this one is returning some hard coded data. So that means everything is still working accordingly, which is great. Now, the big question is how can we connect our React application in order for our React application to be hitting the server and connect them together? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see this in the next video.